Welcome to this presentation on IS and Social Customer Relationship Management, recorded for our MIST 2090 Business Information Systems course at UGA's Terry College of Business under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. In this presentation, we'll discuss customer relationships, we'll look at viral marketing and new tactics for marketing, We'll discuss customer relationship management and social customer relationship management. And we'll look how information systems are related to social customer relationship management. Remember as we look at businesses that a key portion of our business model involves the way that our company relates to customers. The web, mobility, and social networking has changed the way these relationships are maintained. The existing marketing paradigm is that the company controls the message. There is unidirectional marketing message from the company to the consumer. The company can control the message that is sent out as in this older ad from 1946. The company can control the message in letting us know that their product will satisfy rather than delight. The company generates the product and the marketing content. And traditional marketing follows the four P's of marketing. Product, price, place, and promotion. First, the product or service must be something that satisfies or delights a potential customer. It is about understanding customer needs and providing a benefit to satisfy the need in the form of a product or service. Another important element of marketing is price. Do you win business by being the low-cost leader? Think of Walmart. Or do you send a signal to the market with a high price that you're a luxury item or very high quality? Think Mercedes-Benz. Next, place is important. As they say in real estate, location, location, location. Where you offer your product is sometimes just as important as the product itself. The final P is promotion. Sometimes the best way to sell a product involves brand recognition and mind share. It is important to promote the right image and advertise the value you provide. Further, in the traditional marketing model, there were certain assumptions about consumers. For example, consumers have traditionally trusted expert opinion in messaging. For example, the opinions of doctors. Another assumption is the majority fallacy, which involved assuming the majority of customers comprise the target market. Anything that doesn't interest a large portion of consumers is not interesting to organizations. Unless many people will buy my product, whether it's tennis shoes or peanut butter, retailers will not provide shelf space, and I will not be able to provide the product very broadly. In recent years, companies are finding that they cannot control their message like they once could. Consumers talk to each other using social media, and the word gets out fast about any problems or misrepresentations. Companies must actively monitor social media and now must engage consumers in a bi-directional conversation. Consumers provide information that other consumers read. We sometimes refer to this as user-generated content. It is the little people, the users of the products, who provide the content more than the organizations that provide the products. Through user-generated content like blogs, tweets, posts, and ratings, consumers increasingly control the message about products and services, not the companies that provide them. Consumers are actively engaged and involved. Many think that there is a new marketing paradigm. Instead of the four P's, it's the four C's. Customer, cost, convenience, and communication. First, customer. In the old paradigm, it was a focus on your product. Now it is less about what you're selling and more about who you're selling to. You're not selling a product, you're providing the customer with an experience. Secondly is cost. It is now less about the price of a product, more about the cost of ownership to a consumer. Instead of buying disk storage, now we provide services like Dropbox. Instead of just selling software, for example, it is more about paying for use of software. Next is convenience. It is not only about the physical place, but how easily do you make your products available? Do you allow PayPal? Are your products available through Amazon? Or do you make it difficult to find or purchase your product? Finally, marketing is now less about unidirectional promotion of a product and more about multi-directional communication with consumers about products. In the past, consumers trusted experts. Now they question experts and instead trust more in other consumers, their peers. 
Some companies are keeping this in mind and providing experiences that engage and also allowing consumers to help co-create the products. Also, where in the past products would be targeted at the majority of consumers, now there are ways you can reach niche consumers. If you sell a product for a very small set of consumers, through the internet you can reach them. Books are a great example. In the past, the big book retailers like Barnes & Noble could only spare shelf space for books that would be popular to a wide variety of co their consumers. They would never carry an obscure book from Finland for children. Now, thanks to Amazon, Mum and Papa books are available to kids throughout the world. The video snippets that you just enjoyed were from Gangnam Style, which was recorded and posted by a South Korean artist named Sai. This is known as being one of the biggest viral hits in history. Here's some information related to Gangnam Style. At the time of this infographic, there were close to a billion views of Gangnam Style, and since then there have been over one billion views, the first video to ever reach such on YouTube. Notice the large number of comments, likes, and dislikes. Notice also how many times this video has been shared on the likes of Facebook or Twitter. Notice how Sai's popularity has also increased. According to the data at that time, one out of every 95 people who watched the Gangnam Style video were engaged viewers, meaning they either liked, disliked, or commented on the video. Gangnam Style is an example of a video that is said to have gone viral. You might have heard of viral marketing and about the different videos, blogs, or tweets that have gone viral, such as Gangnam Style. This concept of viral simply means that something becomes rapidly circulated on the internet. People republish, retweet, reblog, and remix your content, and the next thing you know, you are viral. The exponential diffusion of content on the internet is made possible by something we refer to as the network effect. If only a few people spread the word to a few people, then those people pass it on, and so on. Very quickly, hundreds, thousands, and even millions can have access to content. It is critical to engage people, turn them into advocates, make it fun, entertaining, and enjoyable. Marketers would like for their message to go viral. But how do they do this? There is no magic formula, but you may note some things that you must do. First, you have to provide interesting and entertaining content. Then you have to make this content available. Ideally, leverage the whole ecology of media available. Tweets, blogs, links, videos, posts, etc. Second, keep in mind that certain users are more influential than others. Some people simply have more people that pay attention to them. There are a variety of websites, including Clout, that track and rank the influence of different people. It is important to engage influential people and get them to actively promote your content. Finally, there are different forms of content that tend to be more viral than others. Those that allow user-generated content. Also, games and entertainment. Games work well. There's a movement toward the gamification of company messages. It's important to note that although the times are changing dramatically, the old tactics of unidirectional messages still work. But now it's important to get those messages to people at the right time, when they want to make a purchase, for example. Google makes its money selling ads. Companies buy certain search terms to make sure that they have high rankings when certain combinations of words are searched. If you don't buy ads, you can use a variety of tactics such as links and keywords to move higher in page rank. Google determines the page rank in searches with its database of websites that is populated by web crawlers. Crawlers are bots or agents that search the web and rank pages based on keywords and the number of links to and from pages. Of course, you're going to control the message for your product. You need to attend to user comments and ratings. Be sure you are on top of negative comments and negative feedback.
By the latest figures, the CRM market is over $20 billion in annual revenue. CRM, or Customer Relationship Management, is a philosophy and a strategy supported by a system and a technology designed to improve human interactions in a business environment. CRM is an operational, transactional approach to customer management that is focused around the customer-facing departments, such as sales, marketing, and customer service. Typically, the objectives for traditional CRM might include increases in revenue or profitability, an increase in selling time or campaign effectiveness, improved use of a sales process, or if you're into customer service in particular, reduction in call queuing time. The customer's benefit is better service, attention, and support from the company. The more sophisticated companies use CRM to gain insight into particular customers. A recent trend has been to integrate traditional CRM systems with social networking. These are designed to engage the customer in a collaborative conversation in order to provide mutually beneficial value in a trusted or transparent business environment. It's the company's response to the customer's ownership of the conversation. It's a fundamentally different customer paradigm. It means that not only do the historic operational and transaction-based capabilities of CRM have to come into play, but so do the social features, function, processes, and characteristics that address the interactions between the customer and his or her peers, and the customer and the company with its suppliers and partners. The experience that the customer has with the company is positive enough to make that customer into at least loyal and at best an advocate, characterized by a fundamental shift in the relationship between the company and the customer from producer-client to partners. This is not a small effort. This is a major cultural and behavioral change in how the customers interact with the company. If they see themselves as partners, they feel that they have a stake in the success of the company. They commit to the company in ways that go well beyond customer satisfaction. They become advocates for the company. But these engaged customers expect a return. They expect that they will have some visibility in the workings of the company so that they can make smart decisions. They expect that they will have privileged and personalized treatment. That could take the form of greater discounts, loyalty program points, some other form of recognition. Even access to management isn't out of the question. Social networking provides the ability to break down who is in decision-making position and who is influential and how they interact. User-generated content through comments, ratings, rankings, and even rich media gives us further knowledge about our prospect or opportunity Relationship marketing is all about data. You'll hear the term big data with more frequency. This describes all of the data we leave behind. Two interesting forms of data include transaction data. This is data about explicit events and incidents where a customer actively and intentionally provided data. For example, things you have purchased, sold, etc. or trace data. Trace data provide an ongoing record of customer activities and behaviors where a customer passively provided data. This could be sites you have viewed or places you have visited. One driver of big data is the vast amount of data that can be collected through social media transactions. Nowadays, competitive advantage for a company is increasingly based on data. This comes about through the use of data mining, discovering new patterns from large data sets, and business intelligence, computer-based techniques used in identifying, extracting, and analyzing business data for decision-making. In effect, data is the new oil. For a closer look, please visit some of the sources that were used to create this presentation. This has been a Piercy production.